Hello everyone, my name is Carlos, as you guys may know, part of Cyteens, and today we I have the pleasure of interviewing two of my uh, classmates from MIT, uh, Malik and Miles. Uh, thank you guys for joining uh, me today in this interview. Hey, we're happy to be here, man. We love science. I've been into science since I'm a very young age, probably about like sixth grade was when I really got into it. Like Carlos said, uh, my name is Miles. I study biological engineering at MIT. I'm currently a junior. I plan to go to grad school after this to Purdue, uh, pursue a PhD in either biological engineering or some uh, variation of that. So we'll see what happens. And I'm happy to be here. Yeah, same here, Carl. Definitely happy to be here and talk about, you know, my story and how much I enjoy doing biology research specifically, but just science as a whole. Uh, like my brother said, we've been into science for a very long time. And I also study bioengineering at MIT. Um, I also have a passion for history. I do a little bit of that on the side, but largely, but largely I do STEM and bio bioengineering. And I plan to also get a PhD in some aspect of that after I graduate. And I'm happy to be here to talk about it. That's great. That's great, guys. I'm really curious to hear how you guys got involved in science, given that first you guys are twins. And second, like my curious question is like, who got into science first or was it like an awakening you guys both had at the same time? And how's your, your path been like uh, so far in science uh, starting from sixth grade? Uh, yeah, so I would, yeah. I would say uh, we got um, involved in science. Our first pretty much science class really was in sixth grade. And I think the, I remember this exact page in a text with a kind of like, you know, revolutionized my thinking of like, I want to do this was uh, uh, they were describing how insulin is now made in the US and it's about how they transform bacteria with the gene for insulin. And now we actually have bacteria like producing things for humans. And that just kind of completely changed my view of what biology like meant and what bacteria was. And, and I was just like, this is what I want to do. And so throughout middle school, I just, you know, learn more basics. And then going into high school, I actually did some independent research projects. We had a class called science research where the whole purpose was to do independent projects. And that was just kind of getting us more into the re-science research process. And Miles, you want to go into kind of how that manifested? I mean, yeah, so there was a class called Science Research. Every year, you pretty much work on a project independently in a small group or individually. Oftentimes, me and Malik work together. Uh, our first year, we always did something biology related, and we always used some crazy experiment with animals. Uh, our first year, we did zebrafish. We had a whole 55-gallon tank in our kitchen for a semester trying to do a behavioral study with zebrafish. Our sophomore year, we tried doing uh, a light pollution project based around fruit, fruit flies, and then fl uh, flying insects, keeping in school was difficult. So we got uh, fruit flies without wings. We called them fruit walks. That was a whole interesting project. And then our junior year was probably like the culmination of our research. We did an epigenetic project. Epigenetics is basically a field of genetics, which is currently being explored where environmental factors can turn on or off certain genes. So it actually is like a little nature and nurture in biology, which is a really cool field. And for that project, uh, it was a mouse project. So we ended up breeding and housing like uh, eight mice and then 32 mice in our own attic. Uh, that was that's a whole insane. adventure. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's so cool, man. And, and for, for both of y'all to start at a young age, uh, that's really admirable as well. Um, how was it getting started, though? I mean, at least in at the school I went to, I went to a STEM public high school here in Florida. We didn't have a lot of like research opportunities, but it seems like what you guys were going on was like some serious stuff. Um, how do you guys get started? And like, what was the process, you know, in taking your first steps? Because, you know, at least in science, I know for especially in high school it can be daunting for students uh, to get, you know, those first steps in. Oh, man. So it's like, our school was not, we went to public school too. We did not go to a STEM based school. And to be honest, like the science research department that we were in, like we were, uh, I guess a part of like the greater North Jersey collegiate, like collegiate for like uh, science projects. So that's how we had our in, but a lot of the uh, 
effort from our project came from just us reaching out to like different labs and just doing some online reading about what's cool in biology or what's cool in science and then reaching out to like scientists hoping to get an email back and the science community is generally speaking very good at reaching out to you and so it's like if you just have a passion or an idea and you're like huh this could be cool just do some individual research and it can take you a long way those mice that we got we actually got them donated to us by a uh, like a official mouse lab distributor because they liked uh, that some high school students were actually trying to do some research. Um, so you really don't know what you can get one until you put yourself out there, but it really starts out a passion for stuff. Yeah, no, for sure. That's great. And it's good to, uh, you know, have found helping hands along the way. Um, and during that way, like, for you guys reaching out to like these professors, like how did that come about? Do you guys get just, you know, the passion led you guys there or what kind of tips would he give to like students who want to reach out to, you know, these scientists or researchers at universities that might give them a hand or even offer them like a position at, at their uh, lab, especially being a high school student if, if they don't have uh, any experience. Yeah, so um, with that, and this even goes into college almost. Um, just trying to reach out to a faculty that don't specifically know you. I think the biggest thing, that's how we came about this is, uh, you know, if you're doing research, you're going to be reading scientific papers, right? And Laura, and the main professor we re reached out to was because he wrote the paper that we we're kind of basing our study on. So that's how we figured out who he was. And then in that initial email, um, we said who we were. But the main thing is we talked about the research that he did with very specific details from that paper. You referenced the paper. And I think that's one of the best ways to get someone to respond to you is not just to uh, introduce yourself and reach out to them, but also uh, these professors and researchers like when the people reaching out to them are familiar with what they do. So, you know, if you're asking about a paper, make sure you know about that research, maybe look into that person as a whole, you know, but, you know, um, even now, you know, sometimes I'll just have a question about I'm doing some independent research. I just have a question about a paper and I and I'll email out, email out to that professor and they're at a completely different school. It's just like, hey, I'm doing a, uh, I, I go to the I go to MIT. I'm doing research at for a project. I read your paper. I was confused by this method. Could you help me? And sometimes they don't respond. But generally, if they do respond, it's generally pretty helpful. And they like actually answer your thing in question, you know, so it's about a tailored specific uh questions i think is one of the best ways to uh have meaningful connections with uh with faculty yeah no that's that's a great point you bring up there and um uh, you know that part of connecting with faculty i mean at least you know at mit it's it's one of those uh relevant issues it's just like diversity right within the scientific community and you know looking at us right i'm you know hispanic background and both of you guys you know african-american background it, it's really you know it's something that makes me proud and also something that our university is working hard for that. Like, how do you, um, you know, connect with some of these professors or researchers? Because first, you know, sometimes you, you look for people who either look like you or have like, you know, similar uh, like uh, things to do, like after school or, you know, similar things that you guys hobbies that are into. Um, how, how do you guys connect at that level with the, you know, the researchers and also, what do you guys think about, you know, best ways of bringing in more students into, you know, STEM? Because at the end of the day, anyone is capable of doing any sort of research as long as, you know, they're passionate and have the help, of course. Uh, first of all, I would say that is, um, yeah, diversity is a, a very big uh, issue and concern. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a very different feeling entering a lab or any kind of space and you're one of the few people of your, of your ethnicity, your background there. But I think what generally has helped me is um, one kind of validation. Like if you know what you're doing or not even if you're like, you don't even have to come into the work, but if you go there with a good attitude, and like you were working hard, you know, I think you'll eventually establish yourself. And unfortunately it might take maybe a bit longer but like, I feel like once you're established, you know, you're there. And also another thing that I've learned is when you're in these kind of group meetings or like you're speaking with like these faculty or these higher ups outside of research, you actually kind of learn they're more like it kind of humanizes them a bit more and you kind of get more familiar. And it's just because that can be a little intimidating, you know, when like you're in this like teacher student role or lab head 
student um, re- student role, but you actually just like kind of speak with them on in conversations. To what I've seen, at least it's seen it's really been a a better experience. And Miles, if you want to go into that a bit more, I mean, yeah, like he said, intimidating. I mean, uh, just in high school, I would say Malik and I have maybe attended about six science fairs, uh, maybe like actually competed in maybe about three or four of them. And often, and I would say at least in three of them, Malik and I were probably uh, the only two black people in the entire place in terms of uh, underrepresented people in STEM. Uh, probably less than 10 uh, his, uh, Latinx and uh, black people in the entire conference of 300, 500 people. Even Crazy. in, even in uh, college, we did the synthetic biology program, uh, iGEM, and that competition is international. I'm saying probably like a thousand people were in this place. And the only uh, black people that we saw was uh, us and the University of Alabama team. Um, and so, yeah, diversity in STEM is like a huge thing. And um, Malik and I, we try to do a lot of things just locally to try to increase that. We realized that our high school doesn't really push diversity that much. It, it pushes like sciences, but it doesn't do it targeted. And so we have recently tried to reach out back to our high school to work with them. Um, we were going to uh, hint at it later, but I'll bring it up. Uh, we have started uh, a brand new account <laughs> on uh, the up Let's and coming go. app, TikTok, uh, Malik and Miles underscore. We're trying to get rid of the underscore, but we are basically just doing a STEM account where we just are making memes. We tell facts and really like fun ways to try to engage young people in STEM. And, you know, we hope that like, if you log onto your phone as like a young Latin, like Latinx or a black person, and you see just like two, like young, like, I guess, college aged uh, black people teaching STEM that might motivate them that like they can do it. So that's kind of what we're doing along the way. And we've tried to help out with some MIT programs that, uh, help with diversity in STEM. We're at Mission Ambassadors. Uh, we help out with the OEOP, the OME. These are, sorry, let me stop doing the MIT abbreviations. The Office yeah, of Minority, <laughs> yeah, the Office of Minority Education. And then the OEOP is the Office of Engineering Outreach. Programs, yes. Programs, yes. Okay, I got to remember it sometimes. And they are directly to help uh, high school, like, underrepresented groups in STEM uh, go to STEM institutions like MIT. Quick shout out, if you are currently a sophomore uh, in high school and you fit into this background, uh, you should look up the OEOP. They have a summer program where you, well, assuming the year gets better, you can either do in uh, like a six month virtual program with MIT faculty catered for high school juniors, or you might even be able to go to MIT for free and they'll teach you some MIT level classes. And a lot of colleges have programs like that if you just look out for them. So sophomores, just look this stuff up. You'll be amazed at how many people want to help you uh, accomplish your dreams or realize your dreams if you still don't know what you want to do in life. Yeah, and and uh, going a bit off of that, yeah. So anyone who's, I guess, a junior, sophomore or even or even from first years at, at high school i guess just keeping those in mind that there are these um college uh, programs for meant for high schoolers that want to get involved in stem and those are typically your junior year for any juniors um the application with the pandemic and applications um those programs are probably too late to apply now, but I will mention a uh, fly-in programs are very nice as well. So before you actually apply to, col- to uh, colleges, a lot of these um, universities have these programs for um, high school students to be flown out to the schools or it might be virtual now, but either way, there are these programs where they you know, encourage uh, people of multicultural backgrounds to explore the school and learn more about it before applying. Yeah, man, that's fantastic. I mean, I appreciate the work you guys are doing um, and, you know, the whole community, especially, you know, the Latinx and African-American community definitely appreciates, you know, students like you guys who are doing this type of outreach. And you guys mentioned these phenomenal programs and you guys, part. I know, you know, you mentioned previously did some research programs, but do you guys personally participate in any of the programs that offered MIT for high schools or any other programs? And could you describe your experience in that? Uh, yeah, so 
Um, I did my junior year summer most tech. Uh, most tech is um, the online version of uh, this junior year program. And basically what happens is for six months, you can take like one or two courses in like some niche STEM field. There's also like a science writing class. And then you work on a project and you go to MIT typically and you present it in like a five day conference. And then after the conference, uh, there's like an admissions corner and you can literally talk to faculty to help while you're applying to schools. And it, the program lasts from like June till December. So like if you apply EA, you can like, you can still get into a school uh, while you're still in the program, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, and some of the people I've met there are like lifelong friends of mine, some of which are also at MIT with me. Other people are at, other people are at uh, other colleges around the country. I've, I'd have friends at Stanford. I have friends at UPenn. I have friends in Florida. I have like all over the place. And as a minority in STEM, it's really an eye-opening experience because if you're in high school right now and you might feel like you're the only like minority in your school that's either into STEM or into your academics, this program really opens your eyes that you are not alone. And it's one of the best experiences I've, I probably have ever had in my life before actually coming to college itself. Uh, yeah, in a, in a similar vein. Uh, so I did uh, MITE's program which is the six per, uh, six week in in person um, version of MIT's OLP program. So I was at MIT. I lived in uh, if you if you if you uh, ever heard of Simmons, the funny sponge looking dorm. I lived in that for six weeks with about seventy five other students, and then with TAs who were the majority of them were MIT students or other alum from the OLP. So that's always cool is that the people kind of teaching you or helping you out also went through the program and it was just a, it was a great experience as my brother said seeing all these people um underrepresented people from across the country that just all were passionate about stem and learning and we got to go there well what's cool about this program was that we had five classes and we had like a daily schedule so it was actually like we were in mock college for six weeks luckily no grades because that work was difficult but uh it i did get to learn what kind of college work was like i got to, to see what the college experience was like for for a couple for a month and a half and it was really nice and the topics that i was introduced to you know part of the reasons i want to go to graduate school now is because i heard about from some of the tas about what it actually meant to go to grad school because at the time i didn't really know i didn't really know what it meant to be a professor and so to actually see that firsthand was an experience that uh, was really memorable to me and yeah i encourage anyone to <clears throat> apply to this program specifically or just in general any uh, university's high school uh, stem initiatives yeah, that's fantastic for sure. Duffy, uh, you know, one up that it's something super important. And, you know, for parents out there, for students, like one of the things is like financial barriers, right? And as, as I'm aware, like this program and many of these flying programs and even programs that perhaps you guys apply to in high school, especially if, you know, you're a minority in STEM, there's a lot of funding out there. Did you guys uh, receive any funding for these programs? Uh, yes. Um, like I said, mites, um, you know, it was at MIT for six weeks. Um, it was free. I think we just had to pay to get there. And even then, if you had substantial financial things, I think they did travel vouchers for like some people. But no, the program as a whole was free. Like they fed you. And even if you wanted more food, we had like 80 free tech cash per week. Um, that's like on campus money, so to speak. But uh, yeah, these programs paid for all of it. In addition, uh, the same thing with fly-ins. Um, if you do one of these fly-in programs, your would that be about your your senior senior fall? If you do one of those, generally those are also paid for, where they pay to fly you to the schools for a weekend. And so, yeah, so that's another thing is that a lot of these programs are made. Um, they like I said they they target um, people of multicultural backgrounds and they know the hardships of them. And so a lot of them have the finances in account and 
many of which are mostly, if not completely free. So that's another great aspect of these. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, these applications also can be found on the website, guys. Uh, I'll put the link below in the descriptions as to where you can find the direct uh, application link. And, you know, you both of you guys into graduate school and uh, even professor there did not know that Malik. Um, are you guys like looking to be professors in the future? And like, uh, you know, what are your aspirations uh, going ahead? Um, I just know I want to do my own research. And I learned early on that if like, you're in the bio field and you want to do your own research, you kind of have to have a PhD. And I'm like, all right, so I'm definitely going to go to grad school. Um, what I do after that, I'm not sure. I could, you know, and 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 I guess a little knowledge on what a PhD allows, right? Um, the different options are you going to academia, and so that's going to be like the professor postdoc route, which is you, you know, you work at a, a university hires you, you get your own, you get your own lab. In addition to, you know, you also teach classes, you know. That's what the professor was. That's what the part I learned at Mites is that I realized that a professor's main job isn't teaching. It's uh, they have a university sponsored lab. And you could also go into industry with a PhD. You know, you could lead like say the R&D department of a, of a major company or have a higher position in say a biotech company, or you make a startup. That's a very popular thing, especially at my school is uh, people graduating. Some people with bachelors making startups, but a lot of people, um, after your PhD, you make a startup, um, where you make your own company, for, you know, from the ground up. So there's a lot of options with it, but overall, it really gives you some independence in your career. And it tells other people that you know how to think well, and that you know, your your STEM. And so that's why I um, am passionate about getting one. What about you, Miles? I mean, Malik taking up all the words, but I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> I just, I really enjoy research. I enjoy designing. Um, at this current moment, I'm not going to say that, like, I like making biological tools. The lab I'm in right now, they work on tools that they give to other labs who are working on specific diseases and things. I like that aspect that biology gives. Like, there are so many different mechanisms that can be designed that can be applied to a multiple of just like different illnesses and uh, diseases out there to help in treatments and medicines. And so I just want to be in that design process. And so I know in grad school, you work on your uh, whole project and then you got presented to a panel of the top people in your field, just saying, Hey, I did this, please uh, accept it. <laughs> and then afterwards, um, like I said, if I end up working in some lab that like I'm passionate in or Maybe I want to go and own my own lab, uh, or I just want to join a biotech startup to do this type of research. That's just what I see as my future right now. Um, a lot of people, you know, might not like doing hardcore research, and you don't have to. Some people like like doing this physical lab work, and they could just join a company right out of undergrad. There's a lot of options there, but uh, I like the academia aspect of uh bioengineering and so that's what i want to do so that's what i'm going to try to do best of luck with that i know you guys are more than more than capable of accomplishing this uh and you know lastly into the interview you guys have any tips for these high school students who are looking to get into whether it's uh you know stem or more specifically biological engineering and also you know mention your guys's tiktok if you guys want to talk more uh, about that yeah so i would just say for college, you know, I tell all young people this, it's like, it's really about passion about what you want to do. Um, I mean, I cannot go sit here and say sugarcoating, like everyone gets into everywhere that they want to, like the world is harsh. And you know, there are some reality that you got to hit kick in, but pretty much like, there's only one you in the world. I say that as a twin, but it's true. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's a good only, line right there <laughs> there's only one you and you have a story and colleges want that I go to MIT which has whatever single digit uh, acceptance rate that it has and I know people in other top 10 schools and people with like perfect SATs and like perfect 4.0s get rejected like all the time and it's because like they it really is a holistic process which means they look at all of you they want to know what you're doing outside of school. They want to know your background. They want to know uh, what you're passionate about. 
you know, they want to know about you as a person, you know, admissions never really says this officially, but it's just like, if there's anything they look at, number one, it's not academics, it's like character. And so um, if you have a passion, if you have a passion for learning and a passion for a field, I would definitely start looking up colleges in that field. What do we do with Google search? Top colleges for blank or colleges in my state for blank. You um, literally don't like, don't listen to just like where all your friends are saying to apply. Cause I don't know, it's either like where most of your high school goes or whatever like that. Like there are a lot of good colleges all around the country or around the world that specialize in certain fields. Um, and so be true to yourself. And uh, if there is a place for everyone in college, if that's what you want to do. Mouse took a ball out of that, but let's see if I can add anything else. Um, I would just say as, as for your academics, um, keep your grades up. Those are always going to be important. But um, I guess I would say another thing is to take classes that you enjoy in high school and I guess when you take a class, especially something that you're interested in or you think you might want to do in college, you know, do some research on, on yourself. Ask more questions or, you know, look things up and because that helps develop your passions, you know, because you're not saying you have to go into college, you know, and what you want. And a lot of people change what they study in college. and That's perfectly fine. But if you want to kind of see if you're passionate about something, you know, kind of take those classes, try to get a glimpse of what they're like. You know, I remember I took uh, AP Bio, and that was kind of my main thing. I was like, all right, this is like going headfirst into bio. And that's where I kind of learned the specific sections of it that I enjoyed, some parts that I didn't really like, and now I try to avoid those. Um, and, yeah, just about broadening your, your scope of, what, of what's out there. And same thing with colleges, as, as my brother mentioned. You know, see what colleges are out there, you know, and try to find one that fits what you want to do. Well said, well said. And if uh, you guys want to plug in your TikToks as well, uh, just so people can follow y'all. If they look at this video, it's going to be on YouTube. These guys make some hilarious uh, STEM memes. I've seen some of them. You guys even got those lab coats. So it's uh, it's fun to see you guys do that. And, you know, thank you so much for joining me today uh, for this interview. Yeah, no problem. Like I said, the TikTok is Malik and Miles underscore. If you look up Malik and Miles, I think we are big enough to uh, – I think we are big enough to show up now. We ditched our old TikTok account with 190,000 followers to just start it That's over. That's crazy. Uh, to just do STEM content because we like this more and we feel like this is what we want to do actually long term. And so just trying to find better ways to teach people our age and people younger about STEM than more directly than like lecturing or like reading. So we're trying to do little fun things here and there. And we started this account uh, 10 days ago, exactly. And we are currently on about 38,000. Uh, so like I said, people are messing with it. We have a Discord uh, uh, that's filled with STEM people. We really have a whole section in it where we have high school students talking to grad students about colleges. So uh, it's a really wide range of people we have that we're trying to build this community of STEM in. And so if you're interested, check us out. And uh, if you say, hey, I'm from Psy Teens, we, you know, we'll blow it up. It, uh, we are happy to meet all of you guys. I think Miles covered the TikTok, but thank you, Carlos, for once again have, having us. Uh, thank you, Psy Teens, as well, for giving us this opportunity. And for all of you listening, uh, I wish you best of luck in your, in your STEM futures. And uh, if you ever uh, find a way to meet up with us, feel free to give us a shout, and we'll see if, if you want to have a more personal conversation.